Ready. So, okay. Hi, I'm Tina Hill. I am half of Ladies of Villani, and we are back with another installment of Ask a Villager. And we are with... I'm Krista Joy, but just call me Krista because okay. my Is mom calls me Krista Joy. If I'm in trouble, my mom calls me Krista Joy. So <laughs> I say, please just call me Krista. Okay. Yeah. You're not in trouble today. Oh, good. Not and, yet anyway. <laughs> we'll then, see what I say. <laughs> Uh-oh. That could be good trouble or bad trouble. Um, and then at the end, we're going to just talk a little bit more about you okay. uh, besides us. In addition to Ask a Villager, so what village do you live in? I live in Alhambra. And let me just say, I am so excited to be here with you on Ladies of the Lanai. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I feel like I've made it. I've been watching your show forever, and um, it's been so fun getting to know Tina. You know, I saw her in the square like early on when we hadn't really talked or met yet. And I'm like, oh, there she is. Tina. Oh God! I gotta talk to her, and now here I am on your show. It's such an well, honor to be fan, here. I can fan girl over you too because <laughs> if you don't recognize the voice, where would people know you from? But we'll and we'll go into more at the end. But so I'm one of the on-air DJs at the Villages Radio Station, and uh, so it's it's a little station called WVLG, your Villages soundtrack. <laughs> <laughs> But none of the opinions that I'm going to say represent the radio station right. in any way. This so let me just only. make that clear. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here with you. Um, so. so where did you live before you moved to the villages? I lived in Orlando, Florida, a whole hour Is that away. Where you grew did you grow up there? Born and raised in Orlando, Florida. Real so Florida. yeah, something different. I did uh, have the opportunity to live in uh, the, on the Gulf Coast in Venice, Florida for about a year and a half. But okay all the other time pretty much winter park orlando area yeah um and how long have you lived in the villages i've been here just over two years now already okay and how did you first hear about the villages i've been a fan for a long time like being a floridian and living in orlando like is just it's just known you hear about the villages yeah <laughs> my my older sister her hobby was to get on the trolley and to go see the new construction site so we would take my mom that would be like a day trip with my mom and so i've been familiar with the villages for years and so then you've I have, seen it grown yeah a little bit a yeah. little bit yeah and I've, I've had friends that live here for years and years and love it here so okay. um and why did you decide to live uh in this area well in Alhambra? alhambra Alhambra. Alhambra. Yeah. Or why did you decide to live in that area as opposed to other areas? Because that's up north, right? Yes. And um, I just am so fortunate. I have my dear friend. Actually, she, well, okay, we met because I needed a place to live in the villages, right? So my dear friend, she's a widow also. And um, we had some mutual friends, some that knew her and some that knew me and knew my situation that I needed somewhere to stay. And she had... Uh, a room that she needed to rent and it just it all came together at the perfect time but I'm so happy to be where I am I love the location I love being close to everything I love the historic side but I love the newer side too I love where you are as well I just think you can't go wrong in the villages okay well no knowing what you know now and for how long you've lived here um, would you want to live in a different area I'm happy to be in any area of the villages, <laughs> honestly, but I what? like being, I think I'm pretty centrally located. I love Spanish Springs, and of course, I work at Lake Sumter Landing and right. Spanish Springs, so I love the location I'm in right now. So it's close it's, to everything it's for it's me. It's convenient. Yeah. And you've been here, what, two, you said two years? Just over two years, okay. yeah. And so you haven't, you haven't moved then? That's the only location uh i when i first got here i moved closer to brownwood for a couple of months oh. and that was lovely also just to kind of be in a little bit of a newer section um so i feel like i I've, I've been able to live kind and of how on, did you think living near brownwood was different than where you live now is there any big difference or just you drive a little bit further to get to some places but <laughs> yeah i mean it's all good it's all wonderful i okay. highly recommend it yeah. i was gonna say are you a snowbird snowflake or a frog but oh god willing i want to be here till i croak okay. girl i want to be a frog <laughs> yes and normally i would say are you retired or still working but you said you mentioned you work yeah at radio i'm station. working two jobs and you do performing and whatnot which we'll also go into but yeah. you're a performer as well as a uh on-air personality. There you go. That's I what we like say, to call a it. voice. Uh, what, <laughs> what would you say? Um, so, with that being said, so what's what some what's one of your favorite or favorite menus for dancing or listening to music here? 
well, everybody loves the squares and knows about the squares, right? And we've, we've probably danced together on the squares. Uh -huh. It's a very popular villages thing to do. Right. Do you have a favorite one? My favorite square yeah. is probably Lake Sumter Landing right now. Uh, I love the water. I yeah. love being by the water and I love the location. Uh, I love looking over and seeing, oh, there's where I work. My radio station is right there. Because so. you do, yeah. There, where, is, where is the radio station? So we, we broadcast live from Lake Sumter Landing. Unless there's some sort of um, situation like a hurricane or something where we couldn't, we do have capability to broadcast from somewhere else. But okay. um, we're truly live, truly local. One of the only radio stations in the country. To still and it's be. near the haagen -Dazs? Yes. So it's right okay. across from Red Sauce in Lake Sumter Landing. It's just a little hut. You have to kind of be looking for it to even know it's there. Can come, people come and wave and say hi to you? That's my favorite part. <laughs> yeah. If I ever feel lonely, I just look out the window. There's usually people walking by. <laughs> um, who do you, or do you have a favorite band? Do you have a favorite band in the villages or bands? Well, my band right now. Uh, <laughs> Which is? So my band is Crimson Sunset. It's really Wally's band. Mm -hmm. Uh, Wally was so nice to invite me to be in his band. And if you watch Jerry and Linda on YouTube, the village's newcomers, mm -hmm. and you hear Jerry go, hit it, Wally. That's Wally. That's Wally from Crimson Sunset. He, uh, I when guess, he does the mailbag, it's the mailbag Monday. That jingle, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The jingle or the opening, whatever, whatever it is. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever it is. <laughs> yeah. So that's, uh, that's Wally. And I'm, I can't believe I'm in Wally's band. It's okay. really fun. And outside of that band, like the bands that play in the, the square or at, um, Sawgrass, do you, are you, uh, do you have a favorite one of those? I enjoy all of them. Um, the ones that I've gotten to see, and I wish I had more time to see, really see all the bands and give you like a really educated opinion. But of the ones I've seen so far, I've met the guys from the Greg Warren band oh. and they're very nice and very friendly and I love the music they play. They're popular. So I try not to miss them if I, you know, but I know that, uh, man, the villages brings in world-class talent, unbelievable. Yep. And I can't wait to uh, see more bands so I can give you more of an educated, like, opinion but okay. they're all great um let's talk about food oh let's <laughs> my favorite subject <laughs> um who, who do you think has the best pizza that's always like up for discussion you know they say pizza's like sex even when it's not that great it's still pretty good <laughs> right <laughs> there, and there's like all this uh there's thick crusts, there's their thin crusts, you know, Something all the controversy. Something for everybody. I'm really into vegetables right now. So if I can find a good cauliflower crust pizza, I would be so thrilled. Okay. I know Marco's is good. My friends are all saying, you got to try Marco's. They're really, really great. Okay. Uh, I've heard Paisano. Yes. I haven't had it, but I've heard they're good. I've heard that as well. Um, do you have a favorite restaurant if you want to splurge? Here. Well, again, I hope I have or time to. Or if someone to, else uh, wants to splurge oh, on someone, you. Oh, that's a different story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the nicest one I've been to so far is, um, I think, Bluefin. I love Bluefin atmosphere. I feel like I'm at one of the restaurants at Disney Springs. That's I compare everything to Disney Springs. <laughs> I love the atmosphere in there, but I really love uh, Chop House mm -hmm. as well. Anything's white tablecloths, and you just feel like. You know, special. it's extra special. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite spot for breakfast or brunch? I'm diehard flying biscuit. Yeah. In Lake Sumter Landing. I mean, I know I like them. people. Are, do you like them? I haven't been there in a while, but I like them. It's controversial right now. There's some things going on, but I love that place. I have the <laughs> frequent flyer card. I have everything. It's Ooh. like they should know me by now. I'm there so much. I love it. <laughs> um, what about your best advice for airport transportation? Well, I personally, I like to drive and because I'm from Orlando, this is cheating. I'm from Orlando. My family's all from Orlando. I'll park at somebody's house oh. and then Uber. That's okay. what I did last time. And that was my favorite so far. My favorite way to do it. That's a, that's a good way. Yeah. Um, are you a golfer? Do you golf? Not yet. I would love to be. Do you? Okay. Well, then do you have a favorite pool? Because we won't say golf course, but do you have a favorite pool? Yeah. Well, again, I want to go to all of them. I want to try them all. Are you a pool but again? I think so. I have become a pool. I can't believe it. So this is a new thing since moving here because I was always, I don't know, maybe it's this age I'm at, but I used to be so, I don't want anybody to see me in a bathing suit, all that stuff. But something happens when you 
get a little bit older, you're like, I don't care anymore. This exactly. Is, this is me. This is me. This is what I look like. This body's all natural. All right, you get it. This is what it is. So I've turned into a pool again for sure. Sometimes and what, twice a what day. What is a pool again for people that don't know? So it's just a nickname we gave ourselves, right? Because we like to go to the pool every day, and we like we prefer the pools that are open late. late. There are a few. Yeah, because I work until 10 o'clock at night, so I'm really grateful for a pool that's open until 11 that right. I can drop into. And yeah, so I think as far as favorite, I mean, we're at Chula a lot, yeah. so I guess you could call that I my favorite. I still have to make it up there. Oh, really? You yeah. haven't been at all? Mm -mm. Not up there. Oh, well, the newer pools are beautiful, too. They're just more shallow. Right. The older pools. But they don't stay open late. They're and they don't up. stay open late. Yeah. So. Such a bummer. I'm going to come one one time. Um, do you have, what are your, do you have a favorite activity in the villages? Like a village type activity thing? I think, I think it's jumping in the car in my swimsuit and going to the pool. That's my new <laughs> villages activity. I, I wish did, I had more. I was going to say, I started, we haven't done it yet, but, um, you know, I golf with my girlfriends on Monday and I started packing, I keep a bathing suit, you know, in the car. In the, in the golf cart. Uh -huh. So that if we decide instead of going for drinks that we want to go for a jump in the pool, I can do that. Do you keep a bathing suit in your I have, yes. Oh. And a couple towels because you just never, and it's like sneaking in exercise. My doctor encouraged me. She's like, you don't have to go work out, but sneak something into your life that's fun and you enjoy. So that's what I'm doing. I'm swimming. And uh, I love the Elvis Club. I need to give a shout out to the Elvis that was, Presley My next fan question club. was, what's your favorite club? Oh, I love Stephanie and the gang over at the Elvis Fan Club. Uh, we have a little meeting once a month. We all appreciate Elvis Presley. And, and what do you do at an Elvis Club? Well, do most you sing, months, do you sing Elvis songs? Do you? <laughs> <laughs> Stephanie is really good at bringing in the very best Elvis tribute artists. We yeah. don't call them impersonators. We call them <laughs> because they do a tribute. There's only one Elvis and he's dead. Yes, I know he's dead. People ask me that all the time. Um, but she will, she will find some of the greatest Elvis tribute artists in the country, bring them to the club, and they perform for us. And we feel like we're just getting our own concert. It's lots of fun. Oh. And I get to perform on next month's meeting. Actually, I'll be the one singing all the Elvis songs next month. So um, that's the other thing. It's just it's I was going to say, do fun. you get up? Maybe you get up. And, you know, I used to love to watch, like, the Elvis movies. Like, do you get, get up when the Elvis guy is singing and you're like, Anne Margaret? I want to be. I want to be. I want to sing backup. You know, that, that's a thing I do, too. I, I love singing backup for them. Elvis music has so much beautiful backup. Um, I don't know what you call that, but I do sing backup professionally for okay. Elvis tribute artists. So I always want to jump up and sing backup, you know, but I try to control myself during the meetings. Um, do you have a golf cart? My roommate, hi, Ann. I'm sure she's watching. <laughs> uh, my roommate has one. And she's so kind. And she lets me use it whenever I want. So I and feel is like it gas it. or electric? It's gas. Okay. But electric's great, too, I'm sure. Okay. Wherever you you're going, I want to go with you. So I don't care what kind of golf cart you have. <laughs> um, are you a beachy girl? Do you, do you have a favorite beach? Being Orlando and all of that, like, do you have a, but a favorite beach, actually, that you can um, easily get to from the villages? They're all at least an hour away, unless we go to that big lake. Unless we go to that Eaton's Beach. We call that a beach, right? Right. Um, I think because of my history and stuff where I lived in Venice, which is not close. It's a couple hours from here, maybe two and a half. Uh, that's probably my favorite okay. beach only because of you my history there. You would drive there? I do. I do once a month. I actually do gigs out there just oh. to have an excuse to be in Venice and to see my friends and okay. all that stuff. Yeah. Um, do you have a favorite place in the villages to take visitors? I or your love. kid. You have two kids, right? Yes. Two. I have two grown boys. Yeah, boys. Yeah. One's 30, one's 28. I can't believe it. Unbelievable. I can't believe it either. <laughs> and a baby granddaughter. That's oh, just, I didn't oh. know that. Your grandmother? Yeah. Oh. She's nine months old. She's, oh, she's everything. Uh -huh. um, but I love showing this place around. Do you feel like that? Like, I yeah. just, all I want to do is put, a, I'm like, you just don't understand. You have to come see me. It's hard to explain. Yes. You have to experience it. But, so when they come, like, is there a favorite place, like like Sumter or somewhere in Spanish Springs, blah, blah, blah? We always you know. go to the radio station. Okay. And when I was, right now the Waterfront Inn is under res renovations. Right. Um, but I was singing there once once or twice a month. So a lot of times uh, one of the boys or both of them, they would come with me and uh, for my gig. So, okay. yeah. Do they sing? 
Bradley does. He doesn't want to admit it, but he is a great singer. Is and, he an Elvis uh, impersonator? No, no, Tribute no. Tribute artist? No, that's just me. The okay. one, I'm the only weird one <laughs> in the family with that. <laughs> they don't even know why I love Elvis. They think maybe it's my aunt. Maybe it was her influence. But no, okay. my um, my younger one appreciates Elvis. We've been to Graceland together. He appreciates the music and all that stuff. My older one, um, not so much. But my older one's the singer. So oh, there, okay. yeah, there you go. Um, what's what's your best kept secret in the villages? There's to me, there's a lot. People just have preconceived notions of what it's like, and um, but what's something that a lot of people don't know that you either do or visit or. Like a Our part of it, like a secret type thing that people don't know. I'm trying to think if I know anything like that. <laughs> um, well, I know about a ra the radio station because here's the thing. Even though I knew about the villages and all that, I really didn't know about the radio station until they hired me. So I love telling people about that, that we have our own radio station, that it's not all like sleepy, horrible old people music that in fact it's getting really modern now we're getting complaints it's a little bit too <laughs> oh really <laughs> yeah i mean if you can call white snake and bon jovi and things like that huh. like too modern um because the radio station also plays throughout the squares right yes when the bands aren't there so the music is kind of piped through in all the recreation centers and a lot of the pools as well oh yes i didn't know that from yeah that. it's oh. pretty neat. if you hear a rock singing that's probably <laughs> it's probably the village's radio station okay. yeah <laughs> um you're a really friendly bright light i well, say thanks. she's like a shine like sunshine when she walks at wherever she is Thank but you. What's your advice for making friends here, meeting new people, making friends in the villages, especially in the villages? Well, it took me a couple years to really connect. Uh, I had my friends already that I knew when I moved here, but uh, the key was, I had no idea, but the key was getting on Facebook and finding the Facebook groups. And then we found, we found each other and the 50 somethings Facebook group. Right. And, uh, the, y'all just feel like my people now I, I mean it's 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 a great group yeah I love it. yeah um but if you didn't have the 50 something group and you were new here and you're shy what would you what would be advice you would give to somebody new here well the easiest thing is to check the village's daily sun the newspaper that comes out every day um every thursday is the big insert with all we have over three thousand social clubs in the villages it's amazing. You, and you can also find it all online like who's meeting where whatever it may be the crazy elvis people that love elvis or you know the people that like diamond dart or the people that like singing or ukulele whatever you're into or maybe want to try I would say try the social clubs or we have so many churches in the area That's too. True. That's a yeah. good idea. Lots and lots of churches, you yes. know, per capita here. There are, there are a lot here. Yeah. Again, something for everybody. Truly. <laughs> yes. Um, what was something that surprised you after you actually moved here? Like you had heard about it for so long and then when you actually started living here, was there something that surprised you? How much I really love it. And I really love. You weren't expecting to love it. No, today. I mean, I, I had a friend. Okay, so when I was in Orlando, uh, I had a friend that moved here long before me. And I just kept thinking, why do you want to be away from all of us? Why you don't, you know, we got everything in Orlando. Why do you want to move to the villages? And then I got here and I'm like, okay. As a single like woman, as a widow, I feel it's very safe here, which is, you can't put a price on that. Um, I love how pristine everything is. I really appreciate all the work that goes into making it beautiful here. And just the friendliness of everybody is so casual, laid back. There's not, I don't have all the traffic that I have in Orlando. I have to go home every once in a while just right. to appreciate that I'm not sitting at traffic lights and all that stuff. Yeah. Um, what's something that you learned how to do after you moved here? Anything new? Well, I learned to appreciate swimming. <laughs> That's since I moved Were you here. Not a, did That's you not know sure. how to swim? I really, well, I know how to swim, but I just, I don't really care for it that much. And now it's like, I want to go every day. Are you going to do my exercise. swimming? No, no, nothing like that. I like, okay, we shouldn't even really call it swimming. It's more just floating and visiting in the pool. And then I'll go, I'll be like, okay, I got to go back. I got to go uh, swim back and forth a little bit so I can say I did something. And then I'll go back to socializing. <laughs> socializing. Yeah, it's super fun. Um, what's something you wish you knew before you moved here? Is there anything? Um... 
that I wish I knew before I moved here, just that it's not that short of a drive to go back to Orlando and visit. And it's really okay not to be, you know, my whole family, everybody's right there. Um, Are your sons there? Yeah. They're in Orlando? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So it's, and it, but it's not that far. So at first right. I was kind of bummed. Um, I thought I was going to have to drive, you know, but it's really it's not, not that far. It's not a plane ride. It's just a no, car drive. It's super easy. I'm, I'm so blessed. I have so many friends with grandkids in other states and everything right. else. And right. so... Yeah. Well, you kind of touched upon it, but about what your friends and family said. What did your son say when you moved here? Oh my gosh. So Bradley was, he was the, <laughs> he was like, mom, you're moving to a retirement community to be on the radio station. <laughs> was there ever a more perfect job for you? And I'm like, I know. Thank you, Lord. It's just unbelievable that he placed me here. And uh, I've always been a little old lady trapped in a young girl's body. My mom always said that. Really? I've, I love nostalgia. I love the music of the 50s and 60s. I love modern stuff, too. But mm -hmm. um, I'm just so comfortable here and so at peace here. Okay. Yeah. Um, complete this, this sentence. You'd never believe it, but in my life before the villages, I... Is there something that might surprise us about you? That well, it, it's still true today. I, I say that I'm in the closet. I'm a Mary Kay consultant <laughs> that's in the closet. <laughs> I've been selling that's Mary Kay. her makeup looks perfect. Oh, well, thank okay. you. <laughs> <laughs> I've been selling Mary Kay for 30 years, but I don't really tell people. I just, I more, it's, it's, it's like a my mom habit. Used, my mom uses my own Mary habit. Kay. My mom's 83, but ever since I can remember, She's used, and she has pretty good skin. Yeah, but and I used it when I was younger. It's a it's a great line. It's a great product. I love being able to get it at a discount. So that's well, that's, there you that's go. mostly why I'm in the business. But it's always been there for me. It's that's another thing. I mean, it is a, truly a business. If I wanted to, right. like during COVID when there was no performing or anything like that, I went back to my Mary Kay business. Oh, good. And it was there for me. And when my kids were little, I didn't have to. Um, Right. Put them at a babysitter. I was able to stay home and, yeah. and do my Mary Kay. Do you have any samples? Of course. <laughs> For you, yes. <laughs> I love sam I love samples of anything. Whatever you would like. <laughs> um, how about this one? I really wish the villages had... I'm looking for a fat, fantastic seafood restaurant. Oh. I, maybe I just haven't... I mean, I what talked you, about what Coastal kind of Del Mar. What do you but, think it's lacking? Like, what, what do you man, wish I had? just love... Sometimes you just want a good lobster. Or maybe some rock shrimp. Like, mm -hmm. Rock shrimp is famous in Florida. I used to be able to, I used to have to go to Dixie Crossroads to get rock shrimp. It's it's shrimp that tastes like lobster. Ooh. If you're not familiar, it's one of my favorite things in the world. You can't really. Well, when you find it, I want to go with okay. you. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's a date. <laughs> um, and then I think Eastport will be. Oh, it's going to be amazing. Just the indoor facilities alone, the indoor gymnasium and. Um, how versatile it's like they've taken all the years everything that they've learned so far and they're going to put all the best parts of it into Eastport which is it's going to be phenomenal exciting okay um so now let's talk a little bit more about you only okay. only because like I said at the beginning you may you may recognize your voice um but you are on it's WVLG mm -hmm. and um how did you get that job how did you end up at the radio station is that did you always work in radio or yeah so i've had i've i've been in online radio for years um i i love disney parks so my first show was all about uh disney history disney luminaries the disney parks uh people that worked with walt disney things like that that i interviewed it really was so much fun so that's where it started i was gonna say well i'm gonna segue into because i know you your favorite place is the happiest place in the world but what is it? What is it about it that you feel is so special that you love it so much? You know, I haven't been to Disney since I've lived here. Yeah, well, it's it's people either love it or hate it. It's, right. You know, you bring it up, and some people are like, "Oh," but I always say, "You haven't been to Disney till you've been with me," because <laughs> I don't do lines. I don't really like doing heat. Um, so, what's I your know, secret then? Well, the secret is to know. To know how to do it and to know where you're going and to know all the best places i do a lot of research i watch a lot online to see what's new and exciting um and uh just come with me just you know text me call me we can work it out i'll we'll take have you to around do it and then i'll we'll, we'll give a review afterwards okay but do if, you know do you look at like what's the best day and time to go and yes. which park to go to and 
all of that kind of stuff? I do, yeah. There's um, certain days of the year that you know are going to be low crowds. So I'll give you one little tip. The day after Labor Day is typically the least attended day of the year. So right now I have a plan to go the day after Labor Day and we're going to have a meetup at the Seven Dwarves Mine Train in Magic Kingdom. Join us, won't you? At, at Can you imagine <laughs> if like thousands of people yeah. showed up? Well, all the just come meet us. Come say hi. Let's take this offline. Oh, and, uh, yeah, so we're going to meet at the Seven Doors Mine Train in Magic Kingdom because those guys work. The Seven Doors, you know, they work. So we're going to celebrate them on Labor Day, the uh, day after Labor Day. Do you have a favorite food or treat? Because Disney makes these like crazy concoctions of stuff that are like. Yeah, things you, we're famous for. Yeah. What's, um, do you have a favorite treat there? Oh, the classic Mickey bar. Oh my goodness, it's just vanilla ice cream dipped in chocolate and it's shaped like a Mickey. Everything that's shaped like Mickey tastes better. I don't know. It's almost like the Dove, if you get the Dove um, mm -hmm. novelty, you know, ice cream bars at your grocery store. That's probably my favorite thing at Disney World. I'm really easy to please. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to flip back just to the radio station for a second. Do you have like a special sign on or sign off that you're viewer not viewers listeners know you by well i don't know if they know me because a lot of them are asleep at 10 o'clock at night so two, <laughs> two of my shifts uh end at 10 p.m and i always end the night um just by letting people know that i love them uh, i think it's important and uh it's just is there it's like the a thing phrase that i do yeah i just... say i'm trying to think what what exactly is it um thank you for tuning in and spending part of your evening with me and until we're together again tomorrow night you know, at 6 p.m. Uh, have a beautiful evening, a blessed day tomorrow, and just know that I'm sending you so much love through your radio tonight and every night. Good night, my love. Oh, wow. That's like <laughs> a, I like that. I didn't even know I love them. Oh. Yeah. Um, I'm going to flip back because we talked about a little bit before about Elvis, but what is it, because I know you're a big Elvis fan, but what is it that that's so appealing or that um, that you love about him that makes you such a big fan well thanks for asking this is one of my other favorite subjects in the whole <laughs> world i could talk all day and all night about elvis so everybody has a story like all the elvis fans from around the world that i've met and by the way that was my second um online radio show it was all about elvis and i interviewed the people that dated him you know went to prom with him that oh worked with him um and it's interesting the the common thread throughout they all say he was uh, kind and generous to a fault mm -hmm. and uh, just a good person. Just uh, and he's the American dream. Like, you know, he came from nothing. Right. And but do you feel as a performer, he like he was different? Like what? Yeah. What makes him special besides just being a, a nice person? He had charisma, okay. charisma that nobody can duplicate. And uh, it's so funny that I go to a lot of these tribute festivals and I know a lot of the Elvis tribute artists. And uh, one of my favorite ones of all time, he used to say, uh, we all look like each other. None of us look like Elvis. <laughs> 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 nobody quite has the looks and the voice and the moves that Elvis had. And, you know, he's a pop icon. It's, everybody knows who he is. Do you have a favorite? Elvis song or are there too many? Can mm. you name one or two? There's so many. Uh, the one that came to my mind right now is mm -hmm. uh, Can't Help Falling in Love because Aww. the lyrics are so beautiful. Take my hand, mm -hmm. take my whole life too because I can't help falling in love with you. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on, come on. Those are lyrics. <laughs> um, so for the Elvis uh, tribute artists, who do you think are the good ones around in the villages? Um, well, I don't, I don't know that we have, I haven't oh, met none, any in the villages. Okay. We have Who some really strong visit? ones okay. in the, in Florida. Okay. We have in some Florida. that have actually won. So there's an ultimate, people are just going to be like, really Tina, this lady's crazy. <laughs> okay. But there's like, there's like an ultimate Elvis, uh, contest every year. So the best Elvis in the world gets chosen in Graceland. They do contests. It's, they're like beauty pageants, except they sing. It's so fun. Wow. You need to come with me sometime. But anyway, they have all these contests and the guys will compete from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And then in August, they will pick the best Elvis of the whole year, the best Elvis have tribute artist of the year. This one? Yeah, it's, it just happened. This is Elvis week right now. So oh. everybody's in Memphis right now, um, wrapping it up right now because this 
uh, Elvis passed away on August 16th, 1977. Wow. So Elvis week happens every year, the week before that he died. Everybody, all my friends, they all, we all go to Memphis. Um, I couldn't make it this year. I had too much work here, but there's so many great guys out there, talented guys. And I so appreciate the ones that just do it and they do it for the right reasons you know, to, uh, to honor the man and, you know, just kind of keep the music alive. Cause that's what we really love is the music. So I can't say one in particular, but, oh, can I share this? Yeah. We have, uh, an Elvis tribute artist coming to the Savannah center. Oh. Uh, this is, I think our third or fourth year, my dear friend, Richie Santa. Hi, Richie. Richie lives up in New York and, when um, is he coming? his show is going to be March it's going to be March uh, 2025. I have the date, but I don't know what day it is. But what's great about Richie is he always hires me to sing backup. Oh. So I love when Richie comes to town and uh, I'll be singing backup for him again. Will at, you do at clam the bake? I can ask him. <laughs> I, I know people. That just popped Is that your favorite that song? Clam <laughs> bake, gonna have a clam bake. Yeah, that, you know, that's the thing we what could do. What was the one that Aunt, Aunt Margaret did? That wasn't clam bake. Though. That was uh, Viva Las Vegas was yeah. the movie she was Viva in with Las them. Does he yeah. do Viva Las Vegas? Do you guys do that? Yes, show? we actually do you wear did white that. go-go boots? Uh, no, no we, we like to wear black. I'm in a trio. We usually wear, wear sparkly black and, you know, be in the background. But that's a good idea. Okay. I, should, I should ask the girls if we should do some go-go boots. Why not? Why not? I think so. <laughs> um, tell me about Crimson Sunset then. Tell me about that. Okay, so Crimson Sunset. We are an 80s, 90s, 2000s cover band. Um, now booking at a party near you. You know, we'd love, you know, call us, have your people call our people. Um, the guys we'll, just we'll perform. I'll put in um, the description, like how to. Thank you. Me. Yeah, that'd be great. We're, we're doing driveway parties. We're doing, uh, yes, uh, this week they did a groundbreaking ceremony. Uh, I couldn't make that one, but just, just getting out there and having so much fun. We're doing the neighborhood parties at the rec centers. And, uh, what are some popular songs that you know people love to hear? Like when you do a driveway party or like that, you know, people get up and dance to when you guys play old time it, rock and roll. That's really, yeah. Play that funky music. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> those, everybody loves those. And, um, I love, we're doing some Bon Jovi. We're doing Nirvana. We're doing wow. some guns and roses. So a sweet child of mine gets people dancing. Okay. <laughs> Um, are there any other bands that you perform with also or not at this time, but what are yeah. some of the other, I know you do different performances. Our friend Kathy had told me one you did with another friend that she said it was you and her and you came out in different costumes and did different, uh, female singer things. She's like, it was amazing. Like, oh, thank you. Yeah. I were, I'm very blessed. I have a dear friend. We've been friends for like 10 years. My friend Lisa Stiles, who is also a performer and she's singing around the villages more and more. Uh, we love teaming up and we have a musical comedy show that we do together. And that's probably the one she saw where uh, Lisa dresses up in all these different costumes and characters and then sings. Like well, she, so I think beautiful. someone was Shana Twain. Yep, she does the Shania Twain. Shania, like Shania, Shania. There's, Shania. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I know you meant. I know you meant. There's so many different characters in the show, so you, you know we. Uh, it kind of depends on what the audience wants for that particular uh, show, but um, Cher, Patsy Cline, Dolly Parton all make appearances in the show, yeah. and then so that's our Curly Girlies musical comedy show, and then we have another show we've been doing a lot. It's called Ladies of the Eighties. And that's where, uh, you know, we cover, obviously, uh, Cindy Lauper, Madonna, you know, all of those, those favorite ladies of the 80s. And now we're working on a, a like a comical holiday show oh. that uh, we'll be doing this Christmas. So you just never know, you know, what kind of shows we'll be doing next. So the, the, the places that you perform that for are like fundraisers, drive, you could do driveway parties or if people have different groups. Like yes. they could say, come in and the social clubs, the social clubs. And yeah. Do things like that. Yeah. Well, I think our next one's we are doing the Wisconsin club. We're doing the second honeymooners club is coming up this year. Yeah. It's just whoever wants entertainment. It's something different. Um, that's good. Tell me about your first jingle. Did you do a jingle? Yeah. <laughs> Thank you for asking. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, oh, so I'm in, I'm in radio and I've been in radio, but I've never had the opportunity to do a jingle where, you know, you're singing, uh, uh, I can't, I can't Michael think of it. Michael has a first name? Yeah. Is that a jingle? Yeah. Three, five, two, dentist. Oh. <laughs> you know, what, whatever, whatever the case may be. But yeah, I, I actually got to do one for the radio station. Do you, um, can you sing it for us? 
I can't remember it now. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I only did it for like five minutes. They they recorded it oh. and then it was done. But uh, it was a big deal because it's kind of like combining the two things that I love, which is radio and singing, and they were both at the same time. So oh. it was a big deal for me. Yeah. Well, I was going to say our friend Scott, that we both know, said that you could sing the phone book and it would sound phenomenal. Oh, that's so nice. So that's so sweet. People are going to have to find a way to to hear. Um, you. Can you tell us also about the Goldilocks story? You just like posted something about Goldilocks. <laughs> okay, so so <laughs> a couple nights ago, I knew I was going to be driving some friends to a restaurant. So I'm like, well, I better vacuum my car, vacuum the car. It was looking rough, right? So I go to the car wash place, the vacuum place and vacuuming out my car and I'm just it's 98 degrees. And I'm getting a workout. And I'm totally, it's glistening, right? Not sweating. That's like, right. Glistening. You know, I like that. Glistening. And uh, I don't know, this gentleman pulled up in the, in the bay next to mine and he's like, hey, your hair is so beautiful. Does anybody ever call you Goldilocks? <laughs> and I'm like, like um, all the time. <laughs> yes. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> <laughs> you just never know where you're going to meet someone nice here in the villages, right? That's true. You never know. There's all kinds here. But I thought that was a great, it was comical. really cute story. So I put it on Facebook because he made my day. It was just yeah. so nice. That's it's very nice. Fun. Um, tell me about Petrina. Petrina is like, my who angel. Is she and how do you know each other? Oh my goodness, Petrina. So I've known Petrina for about 10 years. Um, we, we were running in the same circles. She's an entertainer. So that's how I met her, even though I lived in Orlando and she was here in the villages. But so many of your listeners probably and watchers probably know who Petrina is. She performs all over town. She's amazing, amazing. And she is the one that told me the radio station needed a new DJ. And not only that, but she, um, she had a bunch of gigs. She had to go to Europe and she goes, here, you go do all my gigs. <laughs> so Petrina is the reason I'm here. I mean, more or less, she, she got my start here in the villages and she's just a dear friend and a precious person. She raises gobs of money for charity every year. And she's very interactive. With she's the crowd, phenomenal. Like when she comes and does a party or whatever and gets yes. people up, like a motivator. Yes. Them up and dance and yes. All that kind of We're going to be doing a dance party with her at the end of this month. We, oh, we have a table of tickets it? if you want to join. Uh, it's at one of the rec centers. So uh -huh. yeah, and you can catch Petrina here and there. She's got a great website. So go ahead and look and see where she's at next. Okay. Well, tell us uh, where everyone can find you and like when you're on the radio, where you perform, like where should they look to find you? Okay. Um, the radio is WVLG. It's uh, 102.7 FM, 104.5 FM, and 6.40 AM. But when you're not here in town, you can get the station. And this is what all the people do that are dreaming of moving to the villages and can't wait till they can get here. You can get the radio station on your phone anywhere in the country. You just got to download the app, the Villages Daily Sun app. Uh, the Villages app, either one of those, and you can stream the station mm. no matter where you are. Um, and what time are you on the radio there? Usually? I'm on right now. It's Sunday afternoons from 2 to 6 and Monday nights from 6 to 10 and Tuesday nights from 6 to 10. However, I pick up extra shifts here and there. We're having a huge party this weekend with the radio over at Sawgrass Grove. Um, it's the Woodstock anniversary. So we're, we're having trivia, we're having bands. It's going to be a big radio event. So I'm picking up some extra hours to work on that event okay. as well. So the best place to follow me is Facebook. I'm pretty good about my email newsletter, but I could, I could be better even with an assistant. I don't get it out as uh -oh. often as I would like. Okay. Um, but I'm looking for more public gigs. I'm looking for, um, more places that people can just drop in and see me. So um, restaurants and stuff like that, oh. give, give me a call. But uh, private parties are really what I do mostly. Um, so that's, it's hard to come, you know, just tell everybody, come on over. You know, I can't really do that, but okay. yeah, just follow me on Facebook. I try to put my schedule on there as best I can or, or text I've me. Not I noticed you do that. You, you, you started doing for the week, which I yeah. think is good. That's Does a good it helps thing. me remember where I'm supposed to be too. <laughs> I mean, that way people can like, if they're didn't know, Oh, she's going to be at such and such a place. Like you can go and do that. Yeah. That's so. why I do it in case, uh, in case you're out and about you, I would love to see you. I would love to see you. So okay. come anytime. Well, well, thank you for, uh, doing ask a villager. I can't believe I'm here. I still <laughs> can't believe I'm here. You're thank so you funny. for having me. And, um, 
how about in your best radio voice, give us a sign off. <laughs> And tell them, okay. uh, ask our viewers to like and subscribe. <laughs> to <leave> okay. <laughs> All right. If you're a fan of Ladies of the Lanai, like I am, and you want to be kept up to date with what's going on with the villagers who live here, the villagers who are actually having the village's lifestyle, the truth, the real truth. Uh, surrounded by beauty and smiles and all of that good stuff. You get your information delivered in just the perfect way. Check out Ladies of the Lanai. Subscribe and like the channel, and uh, we'll see you there. Thank you. That was beautiful. Was that good? Okay. Yeah. Good. <laughs>